Hi and welcome to Easy Tutoring. Today we are going to figure out how you can find your remaining zeros when you are given one complex zero. And this is the complex zero that we're given. So here's a good rule of thumb. Whenever you're given a complex root or a complex zero, its conjugate will always be a root as well. So if we're given negative 2 minus 5i, we can automatically assume that negative 2 plus 5i will also be a 0. And that is, um, for every polynomial, this rule always applies, and this should be automatic. Every time you see your complex root, always take the conjugate and say that that's a root as well. All right, so uh, are we done? Well, this is x cubed, which means we have three roots. And so far, we have two. We have one left. So normally, if you see my video on how to find the remaining zeros, you know that you would use synthetic division, divide by your root, and see what you're left with. But in this case, can we use synthetic division with a complex number? Yes, you can. Is it recommended? No, it is not. Uh, you can do it, you, you will find your answer, but I will show you guys a better method. So the better method, what you wanna do is you first want to realize that your root, if you put it in a binomial, it would just be x minus whatever your root is. So in this case, it would be x minus all of this. And if we take x minus of every root and we multiply all of our three roots together, we would get this entire polynomial. Now, we don't know what our third root is, so let's just go ahead and multiply these two first and we will be close to that polynomial. So we will have x minus this root, negative 2 minus 5i. And x minus this root, negative 2 plus 5i. So we're going to go ahead and multiply these two together. Now, what I'm going to do first is I'm first going to distribute these negatives in there just to make things not so complicated. First one gives us x plus 2 plus 5i. The next one gives us x plus 2 minus 5i. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put parentheses around the first two terms, x plus 2. Why did I do that? x plus 2 and x plus 2 are the same. 5i and negative 5i have the difference of a negative. This is like saying x plus a, x minus a, and whenever that is the case, you will get the uh, difference of squares when you end up foiling it out. You'll see what I mean in a second. I just want to explain why I'm doing what I'm doing. So when we go ahead and foil this out, we will do x plus 2 times x plus 2, which is x plus 2 squared. We'll figure out what that is a little bit later. Then this is what I was talking about. x plus 2 times negative 5i plus uh, x plus 2 times positive 5i. Those two terms will cancel. I'm not going to write it out just to save some time, but if you guys don't believe me, which I recommend that you do believe me, uh, you can actually go ahead and foil this out and see how the middle two terms will cancel out. So then all we got to do is multiply the 5i and negative 5i, which gives us negative 25i squared. i squared is negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 25 is positive 25. I don't want to focus on the uh, little stuff here, like the little i squareds and stuff. I mainly want to focus on the algebraic stuff. So um, from here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out what x plus 2 squared is. It's x squared plus 4x, and then it would be plus 4. But I'm going to go ahead and combine that plus 4 with the plus 25, which gives us plus 29. All right. so. Now we know that when you multiply this root by this root in binomial forms, you will get x squared plus 4x plus 29. So if we were to multiply our last root, x minus whatever the last root is, we would definitely get the original polynomial we started with. No doubt about that. This concept is very important to understand for what we're doing here. This times something equals this. So now that you understand that, then that means that this divided by this 
will be equal to the last root. That one last root that we need to multiply by. So like I said, um, the original polynomial divided by this will give us that last root that we are looking for. So before you move on, before you continue this video, uh, I really recommend understanding this concept that I just explained. If you understand this concept, great, it is time to move on. Time to divide this into here. I'm not going to explain how to do polynomial division. If you guys don't know, be sure to check out my video on it. So x squared into x cubed goes in x times, x times all that is x cubed plus 4x squared plus 29x. Subtract all of this, 2x minus 4x squared is negative 2x squared. This minus that is negative 8x. Bring down the negative 58 at supersonic speed. And then we have to see how many times does this go into here? It goes in negative 2 times. And then we'll get negative 2x squared minus 8x minus 58. Subtract all of this to get a remainder of 0, which means it worked out perfectly and we're done. And that means that this is our last factor. This is the last root that we were looking for. So from here, you can find your remaining root. All you do is take x minus 2 and set it equal to 0. And uh, when you set it equal to 0, you will get that x equals 2. So from here, just to sum up everything we did, we took x minus that root, x minus negative 2 minus 5i, and multiplied it by x minus this root, negative 2 plus 5i. And if we took all that and we multiplied it, kind of running out of room here, but if we multiplied it by x minus 2, which is the last root we just found, and if you were to actually sit here and multiply all of this out, I guarantee you, you would get this polynomial we started with. So that is how you can find the remaining zeros when you are given a complex root. If you guys ever want ACT or SAT help, be sure to visit my website, www.e-ztutoring.com. Thank you guys, and have a good day.